Well, good morning and welcome to East Church. I am Pastor JT, and I hope that your soul finds a warm welcome with us here this morning on this sixth Sunday of Easter and a day to celebrate Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day to all of you mothers and grandmothers and great-grandmothers and aunts and uncles and whoever has filled a mothering role in somebody's life. We celebrate you today. Before we get into our worship service today, we have a few announcements. A lot of things happening in the life of our church this month. First, we have coming up in the next few weeks a book study uh, in conjunction with Mars Hill Church. The book is Reading While Black by Esau McCauley. I invite you to check your email for more information about the, the book study, but if you want to participate, please go ahead and get your book now, and we'll get you signed up as soon as it's ready to go. Second, next week is a big, big week in the life of this church. It's a candidating weekend for you to elect your new settled pastor. And so here's your moderator, Mark Johnson, to tell you more about next weekend. Good morning. For those that don't know me, my name is Mark Johnson. I am the East Church Council moderator. I am here to announce a special service and a special meeting. On May 16, 2021, at 10.30 a.m., Reverend Lori Crelly will be here to be in service with us and to preach her candidating sermon. Following the service, we will set up the sanctuary for a special meeting. The purpose of this meeting is to review and call Reverend Crelly into ministry at East Congregational Church. For those that can't attend or don't feel safe attending yet, the service and meeting will be live streamed on our YouTube channel. There will also be provisions for call-in voting. Instructions will be sent out later. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you on May 16th. Now in two weeks, we are approaching Pentecost, May 23rd, and that is our official target for returning to our sanctuary for worship in person. There's a lot that's going to be going on as we approach that Sunday. So the very first thing I want to do is to invite you to wear red on that Sunday. Whether you're going to be here in person with us or you're going to be watching at home on our live stream, we want to celebrate the birth of the church and the rebirth of our time together uh, with our connection with the color of red, the color of the Holy Spirit, the color of fire that will be with us throughout that worship service. Also, we're going to have some safe protocols in place for that return to worship. Watch your email for more information about the protocols for returning to worship, and we hope those of you who can be here can be here safe with us on May 23rd. And those of you who are going to stay at home, we, we hope you're able to join us for the live stream as well so that we can continue to celebrate in worship together. And so let's celebrate our worship together here today and get started with uh, the start of our service. Please join with me in the call to worship, the opening prayer, and the Lord's Prayer. God holds out to us the promise of new life, life as unpredictable, as unrehearsed, as explosive as life at the very beginning. God calls us to respond to this gift with creativity, with joy, and with courage. In worship, we can begin to accept this gift of new life. Let us worship God. Let us pray. New every morning is your mercy, O God. Your faithfulness is as boundless as the heavens. We gather to worship you, thankful for all your gifts. We thank you that Jesus, in dying and rising for us, has delivered us from the power of sin and death. 
free us to accept the new life Christ offers us through your presence among us. In the name of Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, our Creator, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. is What is Given from the Heart, written by Patricia C. McKissack and illustrated by April Harrison. If you are interested in this book, please go to East Church's YouTube page and find the video. And have a great week. Our scripture lesson comes from Acts chapter 8, verses 26 through 40. Then an angel of the Lord said to Philip, Get up and go towards the south, to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a wilderness road. So he got up and went. Now there was an Ethiopian eunuch, a court official of the Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, in charge of her entire treasury. He had come to Jerusalem to worship and was going home. Seated in his chariot, he was reading the prophet Isaiah. Then the spirit said to Philip, Go over to this chariot and join it. So Philip ran up to it and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah. He asked, Do you understand what you are reading? He replied, How can I, unless someone guides me? And he invited Philip to get in and sit beside him. Now the passage of the scripture that he was reading was this. Like a sheep, he was led to the slaughter, and like a lamb, silent before his shearer. So he does not open his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied him. 
Who can describe his generation? For his life is taken away from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, About whom, may I ask you, does the prophet say this? About himself or someone else? Then Philip began to speak, and starting with this scripture, he proclaimed to him the good news about Jesus. As they were going along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, Look, here is water. What is to prevent me from being baptized? He commanded the chariot to stop, and both of them, Philip and the eunuch, went down into the water, and Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away. The eunuch saw him no more and went on his way rejoicing. But Philip found himself at Azotus, and as he was passing through the region, he proclaimed the good news to all the towns until he came to Caesarea. Here ends the reading from Acts.
Please join me for a moment of prayer. Loving God, open our eyes to see what is beautiful, our minds to know what is true, and our hearts to love what is good. For Jesus' sake. Amen. God gives us a challenge when we encounter the wilderness. Throughout the Bible, the wilderness is where preposterous yet impactful things start to happen. Abraham set off for the wilderness after God called him to start a new nation. Moses met the burning bush in the wilderness. The Israelites wandered in the wilderness as they learned the laws of God, including the Ten Commandments. John the Baptist came from the wilderness and started baptizing people. And Jesus set out for the wilderness after his baptism for a revealing spiritual experience. The wilderness, as unfamiliar as it is, is a necessary part of our story of faith. It is where divine and consequential events take place. And Philip's encounter in the wilderness is no different. Philip was on the road out in the wilderness at the behest of God. And in this place that is out of the way, he met another traveler on the road, an Ethiopian eunuch. They started to talk, and Philip began to teach, and then this traveler requested a baptism. And they stopped right there on the side of the road. And in this body of water they stumbled upon, Philip baptized the traveler before they both went their separate ways. Now, as we read this passage from the book of Acts, there are are many questions that arise, but there is one that leaps out at me over all of the others. Who is this Ethiopian eunuch? And why is he so important to to be placed in the story of the Acts of the Apostles? Well, there are a few things that we know about this person very quickly. First, he is a person of color, as he is from Ethiopia. Second, he is a eunuch, which means that he has been castrated and probably has lived as such for quite some time. Third, he is wealthy, both in money and in political power. He is in charge of the queen's treasury in Ethiopia and lives as one might imagine when holding that position. After all, in an age when most people are walking on the roads, he is riding in a chariot large enough for at least two people. Fourth, he is searching spiritually for he traveled a long distance from home to worship in Jerusalem. And still, on the way home, he was trying to read and understand Scripture, eager to learn more and to explore his faith more. But here's something that we have to remember in trying to understand his searching. Judaism was the dominant culture and religion of the time, with the temple in Jerusalem as the center of worship. And according to the laws of the time, this Ethiopian eunuch would not be allowed to worship at the temple. 
There are exclusion laws in the book of Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy related to the status of many, including eunuchs. Therefore, despite his pilgrimage from a long distance, despite his important social status of the age, and despite his wealth, he is excluded from worship based only on a judgment of his physical body. How heartbreaking it must have been for him to experience this shame just because of the body he inhabits. He wanted to be closer to God. But those that could help him get closer to God turned him away. So when Philip asks the Ethiopian eunuch if he understands what he is reading as he is reading Scripture, the Ethiopian eunuch replies, How can I unless someone guides me? You can hear it right there. His desire to learn more of God has met a barrier because of his understanding. And he cannot go further in his faith journey because no one was willing to help him. No one allowed him to worship. And no one was inviting him in. But then there is Philip. After Philip had been teaching for a while in the chariot, they they came to this body of water in the wilderness. And the, the Ethiopian eunuch asked, as I see it, one of the most important questions in all of the Bible. Look, he says, here is water. What is to prevent me from being baptized? What is to prevent me from being baptized? This is the the gatekeeper question, the purity question, the, the roadblock to inclusion question. All this time, Philip had so many opportunities to turn away from this conversation and this conversion. Philip had heard the call from God to head into the wilderness, but he could have said no by not going. And Philip could have said no by ignoring the chariot as it went by. And Philip could have said no to running after the chariot and chasing it down. And Philip could have said no to the invitation to get in the chariot and guide the eunuch in reading. And Philip could have said no to sharing his story of faith and the good news of Jesus Christ. And Philip could have said no to stopping by the water. And could have said no to getting in the water. In so many ways said and unsaid, Philip could have rejected this encounter in the wilderness Philip could have said no to growing in faith and growing a relationship and growing the church for any host of reasons, maybe because he was tired or because he didn't want to go in the wilderness or because he felt he knew better than the calling of the Spirit. Philip could have said no to all of that at any time. And instead, Philip went into the wilderness And he chased down the chariot and he got in to read along and he shared his story of faith. And when he was asked, what is to prevent me from being baptized? He didn't say anything. He just got in the water. Inviting another to a place of belonging without judgment or reservation.
This is an interesting story of Philip and the Ethiopian eunuch in the wilderness. The eunuch story is one of being out of place in time with the community around him, and Philip's story is one of inviting in and creating a place to belong, and it all happens in the wilderness, the place that is wild and uncultivated, a place given up to the chaos of creation, a place that is a a wasteland between here and there. But as we've learned all too often, the wilderness is where God's revelation comes for a new age. And the revelation in this wilderness is a key to the future of the church, both then and now. And it comes from that question that the Ethiopian eunuch asks. But it's not just what is to prevent me from being baptized. It's also what prevents us from growing in our faith. As I think about that, I wonder how often we get in our own way, how often we tell ourselves no when the question is placed before us. I wonder how often we make decisions that lead us away from inclusion in the church. And I wonder how often we act in ways that push people aside because we haven't been intentional and so We don't even know the results of our actions. I wonder how often our inclination is to say no. No to inclusion and growth. When God is inviting us to say yes. Well, I think that's what our wilderness journey is for in the wilderness nothing is familiar and while everything around may seem dangerous life finds a way to work in this wilderness it may not be the life that we have gotten used to but it is still life new life growing out of the bounds of what we consider normal And sometimes it is life growing abundantly. In the wilderness, God chooses to show us another way to be, a way to live and to grow into that new life abundantly. And so we have to ask, are we ready to say yes to that life? Well, now is our opportunity because we've been in the wilderness for the last year and more. Whether it is the chaos of the pandemic or the chaos of church decline or the chaos of our political lives or just the general chaos of the world, we have been in the wilderness. And though we're trying to learn and trying to grow, we need a guide. We need a guide now more than ever. How can we know unless someone can guide us? And the guide is there. It's Philip. Rather than run from the call of God to the wilderness, we can embrace the journey into the wilderness and embrace the challenge that comes with it, which usually means that we have to step outside of our comfort zones. After all, there is no growth without discomfort. And it doesn't have to be torturous, but change requires changes and they can be changes that we didn't want or didn't expect but they are changes that are needed in our lives 
That's true of life any way that we look at it, not the least of which through the lens of the future of the church. In order to grow and thrive, we have to change. We have to change. And in order to change, we have to step into a place of discomfort. The wilderness. And yet God shows us again and again that the the wilderness is where the magic happens. Where the revolutionary change comes at the behest of the Holy Spirit. Where new encounters lead to growth and new life. And the story of Philip and the Ethiopian eunuch in the wilderness teaches us that part of our wilderness experience, part of our own growth, is examining what ways we can be more attuned to the ways to say yes to God and yes to new life, starting with inclusion. When the Ethiopian eunuch, a a person without a name in this story, without any kind of identity except for his bodily reality and his social location, when he asks for a place to belong, Philip does not dig deep to find his yes for inclusion. It's already there. The Ethiopian eunuch was wondering in a faltering faith. And he wanted to know where his place was in the community of God, and he was yearning for that invitation. And so he lived into his hope, but to this point, he had only been met with despair in his experiences with God's people. There was no one to guide him. There never had been. So but for this moment with Philip, the Ethiopian eunuch's discovery of God may have ended in frustration and loneliness and his repeated rejection. And I'm sure that did not make him want to go back to worship But Philip reached out. Philip reached out on this wilderness road, creating a new relationship that leads to growth for Philip, for the Ethiopian eunuch, and for the church. And so that's why Philip is our guide now, our guide to look to in these days of wandering in the wilderness. Philip guides us to reach out to the people that we meet, to listen to them without judgment, and to follow through with addressing the needs of the people that we meet. That should be our lesson from our time in the wilderness. To reach out to new people as we meet them, to listen to them without judgment so that we can understand them right where they're at and then to follow through with addressing the needs of those people as we meet them in the ways that they need them. So at the end of the day, we can answer that question. What is to prevent me from being baptized? with our actions instead of our words so that we can all get in the water together and feel the waters of our baptisms once more and remember that all of us all of us we all belong together Amen
We come to our time of prayer today, and as we come to this time of prayer, I have a special Mother's Day prayer for us to participate in together. So let us come to a time of prayer together. Creator God, giver and bearer of life, we turn to you for nurturing, protecting, and care. God, as mother hen roosting, longing to gather us under her wings. To the God who has known us since the time we were knit together in our mother's womb, we lift to you our prayers. Every created being has a mother, and we are grateful for the ways in which our mothers have taught us, fed us, sustained us, and pushed us out of the nest when it was time for us to fly. We know that our relationships with our mothers and our own lives as mothers are not always perfect and even sometimes are hurtful. And so we pray for those whose relationship with their mother is conflicted, wounded, or estranged. And likewise for mothers who have been wounded by or estranged from their children. We pray for those who have wanted to be a mother but have not been able to. For mothers who have lost a child in the womb or out in the world for those for whom their role as a mother is challenging and alienating, and for those who have lost their mothers or perhaps never knew them. We give our love and thanks to those who have mothered a child not born of their body, but deeply loved in their heart, stepmothers, adopted mothers, and partners of parents. We lift in prayer all those, regardless of gender and regardless of blood relation, who have taken on roles, tasks, and qualities traditionally ascribed to mothers. Friends, aunts, uncles, fathers, grandparents, teachers, mentors who have mothered our children and our families of origin, our families of choice, and our beloved communities. Through the prophet Isaiah, we hear of your mothering nature your love for your children, asking, can a woman forget her nursing child or show no compassion for the child of her womb? Even these may forget 
yet I will not forget you. And so we pause for a moment to silently lift the prayers of our hearts to you. If a mother is to be nurturing, Lord, strengthen us in our nurturing. If a mother is to be wise, Lord, increase our wisdom. If a mother is to be strong and fearless, Lord, increase our strength and steady us in the face of fear. If a mother is to be compassionate, patient, kind, forgiving, and loving, then feed us only with the fruits of the Spirit, so that we might become these things. We ask these things in your many names, in the name of your own beloved child, Jesus Christ. Amen. You know, there are so many different ways that we encounter the wilderness in our lives. It is an unexpected place, an unfamiliar place, a place that could be full of fear and discomfort. But God calls us to these places of wilderness so that we can learn and grow and change and become something new, to be given new life that comes from the Holy Spirit. So let us find ways to venture into the wilderness to learn and to grow and meet people there so that we can find ways to be included in their lives and include them in our lives that we may all know what it means to belong whether at home or deep in the wilderness. Friends, our worship is over. Let our service begin. Amen.